tell us in the comment. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. It's challenging because one of the main resources or one of the things I primarily bank on when I'm conducting my when I'm teaching when I'm teaching is face-to-face -face interactions, the capacity mm -hmm. to build something that's not exactly a boundary between me and my students. It's more authentic and sincere connections built on a common need to learn. So I'm learning from them. They're learning from me, hopefully, as I introduce concepts. So making sure that somehow I'm getting my points across despite this online distance learning, trying to make sure that I'm conveying myself with sincerity when I say that they can approach me, they can ask me anything, they can communicate their concerns to me. That's, that's the biggest challenge. I think, especially that, especially considering our current circumstances, making sure that these students not only are being introduced to these lessons, but somehow ensuring that they can understand it, they can apply it. That's the biggest challenge. And formulating assessments around that, essays, trying to get their insights, is a key step in that direction. We can say, you know, is that since the government is that administrative arm of the state, in this case, in this particular context, in context rather, it's the administrative body with task with handling the society of the Philippines. Okay. And in this sense, it follows then that this administrative body has a lot of powers and responsibilities necessary for the conduct of our society. Now, that kind of power in a singular body is risky already. Okay. We are, there's this all there's this common notion of having too much power leads to corruption or having too much power will lead to abuse and that's why it became necessary then to try and divide these powers into three co-equal branches of government what we come to know as the executive the legislative as well as the judiciary now having a lot of power vested in their person is not superior over the other branches of government despite appearances to the contrary. All right? Ang pinaka masasabi natin sa executive. It's supposed to be the most servicing arm of the state, in other words. It's the most accessible. It's the most direct in terms of our interactions with the state, in terms okay. of visibility as well. Yeah. So that's the executive. In contrast to the executive, no, is burdened with the power of the purse. So it's responsible mm -hmm. for two main it's it has two main responsibilities rather first the power to formulate the budget to create budgets to budget our funding as well as to figure out where to source these funds second it's also the ma the main law making body and dito natin pinakakilala ang kongreso natin the mm -hmm. formulation of laws the formulation of things we base off of the constitution in order to address needs as well as the most pressing concerns in our society okay so that's what the judiciary the judicial branch of government is that guardian of the constitution it's that guardian of the constitution it's not meant to enforce it rather it's meant to interpret all actions of other branches of government legislative executive in favor of the constitution so in terms of responsibility, then, it evaluates the law. It interprets the law. It resolves conflicts from individuals or bodies. It could be corporations, groups, doesn't matter, as long as they're a legally recognized entity. The judicial branch can take their cases or their disputes and interpret it against the spirit of our constitution in order to verify whether or not there's been a violation or whether or not there's an actual case to be resolved, all right? So here so the is a representative for the common people, the citizens of our country. The executive is the most visible member of the state. No, the executive seems to represent the government more than the people in terms of carrying out its function and, inter and interacting with the people. The judiciary is more the arbiter, the representative of our constitution. And in this sense, no, role no, is always to act as a support within the executive. First and foremost, the assumption herein is the moment the president proves incapable or incapable of carrying out their duties or 
incapacitated it to whatever degree, the vice president must step in in order to act and take the role of chief executive. All right? But in a normal operating capacity, the vice president is usually delegated to a certain agency by the choice of the president in order for them to have a direct hand in leadership as well as still fulfill their role as a member of the executive branch of government. Okay? Best example of this was your lagi ang vice president. Okay. Kasi kung titignan natin balances ang... Balances as well as separation of powers. No? There's still a degree of minimum interference or interventions between these branches of government. Take, for example, the executive yeah, suit wrong in essence. Not exactly. In moderation and in ideal practices, overlap is good. Overlap is necessary because, again, these branches can then check on one another, prevent abuses of power, and ensure that they are performing their duties. Kumbaga, watchmen sila. They watch over. When you're trying to form a party list, it's supposed to be hinged on the idea that you're representing a marginalized sector that's not mm-hmm. a part of the majority whose needs and fundamental, well, fundamental needs, fundamental controversies mm-hmm. are not typically addressed and given due attention. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, yes, in, well, particularly the Supreme Court as the highest office with respect to the judicial branch of government, it's composed comprised rather of 15 justices and one chief justices, the rest, the 14 associate justices. Okay. So under them, we also have the Court of Appeals, the Sandigan Bayan, as well as the Court of Tax Appeals. And even further down the rungs of the judicial ladder, we then have the regional trial courts, as well as the Sharia mm-hmm. district courts. And then at the lowest level, we have municipal trial courts, metropolitan trial courts, and in that. So it manifests itself even at the most common ground level already. It's something that's supposedly accessible for us for when we do encounter grievances or oversteps from the government or even if we have grievances towards our fellow citizens. Because again, purview and judiciary settle controversies among different entities, entities which also include the government, in favor of the constitution as well as to settle sino ba ang namalian, sino ang dapat pagbayari. Okay. Um, Sige, if it's really in the interest of the people and there's an actual security threat, okay, martial law is supposed to protect us. It's supposed to protect us. But in the context of history, as well as its use in order to prolong former president and then eventual dictator Marcos's tenure in power, as well as grip on power, dun natin, dun natin dapat question it. Okay. Martial law is not necessary, so to speak, unless, again, there is an actual security threat that may endanger the lives of people as well as the entirety of the Philippines. So, if there is a proven threat, earlier we were discussing how overlap may be for the benefit or for the neg- for the detriment, right? So, mm-hmm. it's one of those instances where the overlap between the executive as well as the legislative is problematic. Okay, since again, it's the executive who is handing out pork, you no know, incentives, priority development assistance funds, whatever you can call it, in order to, well, elicit maybe illicitly or impli- implied to gather the favor of the legisl- legislators. Okay, so pork is a manifestation of that because it's no longer in the conduct of their duties. It's very political in nature. Okay? Kung kaalyado ka, mas garantisado mabibigyan ka ng pork. Kung pag hindi, wala kang makukuha. Which seems to facilitate the kind of disloyalty among parties in our country. Okay? Mm-hmm. On top of that, it also is a breeding Episode, ground for... Especially with uh, different universities who also supporting the show. Kasi it's a very deep understanding eh. There's three kinds of scenario where in chinap chop natin yung bawat branches from their meaning, how it works, the issues and controversials about this. So, okay. Um, Mr. Savior, yep. thank you so much. Uh, it's very much something that I think 
still would take a lot of time considering that one i'm still learning and technically mm-hmm. we're all really still learning no yes so i would much prefer to be called a scholar than an expert mm-hmm. and of course there's still something new to learn i will always still be learning and willing to learn these kinds of concepts and i would highly encourage the same for everyone whether or not you're working whether you're a student to always be hungry to learn to always to never hesitate rather to ask questions and to always be open to learning because learning whatever field you're interested in learning whatever hobby you're into or whatever concern in society we have it's a necessary part to your development as an individual and your capacity as well to contribute to society stay tuned for the next episode only here on big media